Prime Video has pulled off in producing the perfect period drama series. Biopic, superhero and post-apocalyptic genres are overcrowding the silver as well as small screen. 100 crores are spent in promotion to earn 300 crore rupees in revenue. Art has been replaced by over-the-top acting and cheap thrills. In this mess, watching a series like Jubilee was a breath of fresh air. Before I explain the brilliance of this series, like this video and subscribe to this channel. Firstly, they brought in Vikram Aditya Motwani, who had prior experience of making a hit period series for Netflix, Secret Games. Vikram Aditya Motwani is known for making offbeat cinemas like Uran and Lutera. He clearly showed his love for cinema through this series. And every frame has been shot with great care and it shows. There is a plot, but in Jubilee, the six main characters have taken the center stage. Each character has their own journey and somehow everyone is interconnected. Over the course of 10 episodes, we will follow the story arc of these characters which have been meticulously crafted and their journey takes the story forward. You will either root for them or hate them. Either way, you will be engaged emotionally. Let's look at these characters. Nilufar Kureshi. The character is loosely based on Madhubala and Wahida Rahman. Nilufar was a reputed prostitute in Lucknow who only mingled with selected clients. Post partition of India, she had to look for livelihood all over again. She used her charm, song, dance and acquired taste and mannerism of high society to win heart of an influential investor to maintain a comfortable lifestyle. Eventually, she moved towards acting profession. She loves herself, full of confidence, street smart, carefree but full of grace. Her past hard life had made her tough. She could mold herself according to her surroundings. In spite of being tough and feisty, somewhere she is looking for love and respect. She knows what it feels like to be lusted and not loved. But she falls in love nevertheless. She represents the lost soul in the movie business. Jamshed Khan Jamshed Khan is the idea of a purist artist. He knows his worth and doesn't want to be trapped by anyone. He will not compromise his free will. He wants the freedom to do whatever he wants to do when he wants to do on his own terms. To him, the art of acting and true love weighs more than world's fortune. He is the person everyone wants to be. Either someone is in awe or love or envy of him. He is the gem the film industry is looking for but can't attain easily. He eventually dies in the first episode which moves the wheels of the plotline and changes the direction of every character's story to a different direction. After his death, his spirit relentlessly haunts the main characters till the last episode. He will either become someone's guilt or mission moving forward. He is the gold standard for any artist. Sumitra Kumari This character is loosely based on Devika Rani. The style, posture and sophistication are inspired by Gayatri Devi, Rachel Weisz and Audrey Hepburn. She is the co-owner of Roy Talkies, wife of Srikanth Roy and leading lady of Hindi cinema. She has money, fame, yet she is unhappy with her married life and all the bindings that comes from being a public figure. She wants to elope with Jamshed Khan, a penniless artist, only to get some peace in life. After Jamshed Khan's death, she makes it her mission to destroy anyone she suspects. She leads a conflicting life of staying relevant as a star, while on the other hand, she takes the highway of self-destruct and revenge. She represents the women artists of Indian cinema who are constantly fighting to survive in the business because no amount of success brings them stability and recognition which a male artist gets. Jay Khanna He is loosely based on Raj Kapoor who was also a young filmmaker. But unlike Raj Kapoor, Jay Khanna's father wasn't a filmmaker. His father was by heart and soul a storyteller who could happily make any place his stage without care for fame or money. Jay, on the other hand, was ambitious. He wanted to reach the masses even if it meant giving up everything. 
his hot head things from his heart and a go getter he will happily do a menial job if that could lead him to realize his dreams he's always looking for a little crack on the door so that he can break it into pieces and the audience can see the raw talent that he possesses he represents the outsiders in the industry who makes it big on their own without any godfather binod das aka madan kumar he is loosely based on ashok kumar and beat of guru dat binod suppressed his desire of becoming an actor for years secretly practicing the craft After the demise of Jamshed he finally expressed his desire to Srikanth Roy and showed his mettle thus he became Madan Kumar the main protagonist Binod the projector operator and right hand man of Srikanth Roy became the household name his audience worship him like a god but in real life he is nothing but a puppet of Srikanth Roy he has to maintain a public image do films which is good for business keep his likes and dislikes to himself and compromise on his freedom of choice Binod Das took the name of Madan Kumar to fit in the limelight but he remained Srikanth's servant being Madan Kumar meant making a deal with the devil he is surrounded by fame but deep down he is living the life of guilt and insecurity he is relevant as long he has the blessing of the powerful people within the industry he represents the big movie stars whose personal struggles remain hidden from the public Shrikant Roy loosely based on Himanshu Roy co-founder of Bombay Talkies Shrikant Roy is the ultimate showman he is shown in the series as the person who introduced lip syncing and cinema scope in Hindi cinemas while others in this series are great characters he is jet black character he knows what is happening he has his eyes everywhere he trusts no one except himself he bows to no one but Shrikant Roy has huge passion for cinema He wants to do things no one has done before. He wants to see the industry evolve. For that, he will do or make others do anything that is necessary. There is no moral compass. He represents the big budget producers who push their own people in the industry and carefully craft their career under their supervision. Motwani successfully captured the changes the movie business went through in that era from production being stuck within the walls of studio to shoot at location. Actors used to stand in one place rigid while singing because musicians played behind the camera. This changed with the pre-recording of songs so that actors could move around and lip sync to make the scene look more casual. Songs became major source of crowd puller by creating a buzz before the release. Acting itself was going through transition phase from being rehearsed, choreographed, melodramatic dialogue delivery to more believable natural portrayal. Movie business was controlled then by few businessmen because the equipments were costly. from production till distribution the whole process was time consuming population of india was mostly below middle class and wasn't as big as now the movie theaters were in limited number and most of them lacked infrastructure so reaching the mass audience was tough the movie plots were mostly heart touching to connect with the audience on emotional level hero's image changed from being one of the superior one to one of a common man Getting into the movie business was tough for newcomers then than it is now because bureaucracy and nepotism was at its highest during the 1940s, 50s and 60s. Then there were things that happened during that time which still exists now. Like movies were made on social issue carrying hints of propaganda. That time it was all about carrying socialism and capitalism message to boost business of Russia and USA who were in cold war. Now it's all about inception of lifestyle trends, false information and political agendas. Actors had to maintain a public image then and the practice still exists now. Dexterity of Motwani is that he directs from the point of view of an editor. He focuses on objects or changes in facial expressions from close up to imprint it in your mind so that when an event happens relating to those things you can easily connect the dots. Transition from one scene to another was never rushed or stretched. There was no scene or song which looked like a filler. Every bit of reel had its purpose. Attention to the details was close to perfect. The cars, furnitures, 
clothing hairstyles mimic the 1940s 50s time frame but he has taken creative liberties like he has not overused bengali punjabi or urdu in dialogue delivery he kept it simple for easy understanding the sets color palettes and smooth cinematography complemented his direction even though jubilee is fictional inspiration have been taken from real life events or hit movie scenes but kudos have to be given to all the leading actors their intense acting hooked the audience till the last episode relatively unknowns like siddhant gupta nandish sandhu and vamika gabbi have given ever par performance opening doors for more opportunities aditi rao haidari is not just a beautiful face she really played the negative role with so much confidence and finesse that it begs the question why she doesn't get better roles in movies Upper Shakti Khurana after staying in his brother Aishman Khurana's shadows for so long and playing the comedic side roles has grabbed the leading role of Madan Kumar with open arms he was the show runner he has managed to break stereotype and play the role of his lifetime there was a time when bengalis were in all important positions in hindi cinema with time the number decreased may be due to lack of opportunity or biasness or under utilization of talent such as uttam kumar who was arguably the best indian actor known for his effortless natural acting it's good that in recent times we are seeing more of parambhuto chatterjee and jishu sen gupto in meteor roles and finally prosenjit chatterjee has arrived he has played the role of shrikant roy with so much authority He used all his experience to give a layered performance. You cannot take your eyes off him. Jubilee is not fast-paced. It's gentle, easy viewing, full of iconic moments and slowly grows on you and leaves the hangover once it's done. Jubilee was successful in mixing art and commercial elements in perfect ratio, making it a masterpiece that will be talked about and studied in years to come.